Hans George Gadamer, the philosopher I mentioned a few moments ago, <clears throat> he argued in his book Truth and Method. First of all, the, just this understanding of the title, he, he says that there isn't a method for discovering truth. There's not a recipe to follow. It's a discovery, a discovery found in process. But what he said in this book is that humans always start from misunderstanding. We are, as humans are born meaning makers. We do it all the time. We're making sense out of everything. You're trying to make sense out of the slide. You're trying to make sense out of, you know, whatever, what I'm saying. We're constantly making meaning, right? And our learning anything new is based on what it is we ever, whatever it is we knew before from utero onwards, okay? So humans always start from misunderstanding to understanding. And we're never done. He says it's human to prejudge, not because we're bad people or immoral or thoughtless, but because we haven't learned yet. We always come into any encounter with presumptions about life, and we're constantly having those upset. Sometimes it's dramatic and sometimes it's minor. You realize, oh, the paper towel dispenser's on this side of the room, not that side of the room. You know, whatever. It can be as mundane as that or more profound. But we're constantly moving from misunderstanding to understanding. And if we fight that, saying I should already know everything, we undermine our ability to engage constructively with anyone. Right? So understanding is, it requires openness to a dialogical process, he argues. And the kind of openness he talks about is not simply open-mindedness, by which he might suggest that in open-mindedness, as he's understanding it, is that we have ideas in our head already, and I'm going to fit you into the brackets I've already got. Right? What he's saying is openness to difference, meaning as I engage with you, and you've, you've, I hope at this point in your life have all experienced this for yourself one time, I engage with you, I meet somebody for the first time, I really get to know their story, and I begin to realize, wow, there is so much more behind that person that remains mystery. That's the kind of openness he's talking about, that the other remains ultimately mystery to us, just as we remain ultimately mystery to ourselves. That kind of openness. So the ability, as he writes, the openness to the other involves recognizing that I myself must accept some things that are against me, even though no one forces me to do so. But it's a stance that you take this. I'm going to hear a story. I'm going to learn from this person. I'm going to engage with this person. And in parts of that's what I learn are going to be hard for me to take in, but I'm going to do it. Nicholas Burbles, in the um, book I referenced before, uh, Dialogue and Teaching, he talks about the need to develop what he calls communicative virtues. Right? This is not an exhaustive list. This is just a list. They include such qualities as tolerance, patience, openness to give and receive criticism the inclination to admit that one may be mistaken, the desire to reinterpret or translate one's own concerns in a way that make them comprehensible to others, the self-imposition of restraint in order that the other may have a turn to speak, and often neglected as a key element in dialogue, the willingness and ability to listen thoroughly and attentively. How many of us are good at that, at that all the time? No one, but the record show, no hands were raised. Yeah, exactly. It's hard. It's hard. And, in, and I like how he even says that last one is often neglected as a key element in dialogue, listening thoroughly and attentively. We talk about it all the time, but in fact, we do it very little. We listen, but we're not. We're listening and having thoughts of our own. We're listening, oh, and getting distracted. We're listening, we're looking at our phone, whatever. It's like, no, to listen is a moment-to-moment -moment activity. I and mean, so you have to cue yourself in on a very regular basis if you're doing it. So I'm recommending that we be mindful of our own reactions 
as we're listening? What emotions come up in me and why those? What am I afraid of? Very often I'd kind of think kind of key emotions are either fear or anxiety um, or anger. And you may say, why? What's that about in me? Now, to do that in the moment takes practice. Eventually people can get there. Sometimes you say, I just got to go away. <laughs> but paying attention to one's own emotions, one's own language, one's own behavior in the moment. Another is to pay attention to your impact. Noticing how what you're saying is being received. Changes in body language, change in the atmosphere, changes in facial expressions, changes in somebody storms out the door, you might say, that didn't go well. <laughs> or maybe they had a bus to catch, whatever. Right? Maybe it's not about me. <clears throat> Remember, intention is, does not equal impact. What we intend may, in fact, not be what happens. So being able to say, wait a minute, I noticed that you, were, you flinched when I said that. I'm sorry if I, did I say something disturbing? I don't even know if I said something disturbing. Did I say something disturbing? Right? And then not to say, well, my intention was that you should feel good about what I said. It's simply to say, I'm sorry. I didn't, that wasn't my intention. Let me, tell me how I cannot do that again. Tell me how I could do otherwise. 